Gamers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. It's got us an 03 Chevrolet Trailblazer here. It has the big 4.2 liter in it, four wheel drive, and it's here for a transmission oil and filter change. Now this is probably one of the most heated, debated topics on the internet. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's one you tend to get a lot of hate on your videos because you're dirtbag. At least that's what they tell me. Uh, what we do, this guy does this on normal maintenance, as most people do or should. You remove the pan, drain the fluid, replace the filter, put the pan back on, fill it back up. Pretty standard. Yes, we all know it does not replace the entire capacity of the transmission's fluid. Same thing when you change your engine oil. You don't get it all out. Same thing when you change the transmission oil. The ratio is a little bigger, but if it's done out of normal maintenance, no big deal. Well, now that we've cleared the air on that, we're going to get started. A uh, pretty simple procedure. you got a couple options. Sometimes I'll take my fluid extractor, pull out the dipstick tube, suck the fluid out of the transmission before I pull the pan because you're less likely to get a bath. But in this case, I didn't. It is early in the morning, my first job of the day. So it's likely I'm going to spill the majority of it down in front of me. But we're going to try to avoid that. We're going to zip all the pan bolts out, all zippy zap. It's my habit to leave a couple in so the pan doesn't fall. Kind of crack it loose, let it dribble, and then very gingerly let it down. However, things rarely go as planned. But we're giving our best attempt here. It's funny how much hate you get on transmission oil change videos. It's kind of comical, really. Unsubscribing. Calling you a loser. Hack. Because I didn't remove the trainee and dump the torque converter. Didn't flush the lines. What else do they say? All kinds of stuff. But I got thick skin and I really don't care what they say. Whoa. Hold on, folks. Oh, great. That one will leave in. Oh goody, somebody put a strip screw in this one. Awesome. Call me a hack. Here's some ding dong puts a flathead screw in it. Real classy. I'm gonna put a bolt in the back here. Leave that there. Now all the bolts are out of it except two. We got a cracker loose, man. It's raining under this car. All right, let's see. We can just crack the pan loose a little bit here. There she is. No fluid yet. Some of them aren't up to the edge of the pan, but better safe than sorry. Oh man. Took a water down the back of my neck. All right, I think we're safe. Famous last words. Every mechanic's worst nightmare, pulling a training van first thing in the morning. So that's good. Now we'll take and remove our filter. Now it pops in up here. Now when you bust these filters loose, there's usually quite a bit of fluid to follow. So be warned. Should wiggle right out of there. I lied to you. This transmission seems like it was pretty low on fluid, to be honest with you. I did not check it prior to starting. Of course I did do the right thing, talk to the customer, ask them, you know, why are we changing the oil in it? 
and apparently he's due for you know, 30,000 mile or whatever it was he had to change last, so uh, I didn't do anything beyond that. Got the rain storm for a minute. So there is a, all kinds of alternatives to, you know, doing it this way. I think Ratchet and Wrench, uh, I don't know if you guys watch him or not, uh, he has a video, I think, doing a Dodge pickup where he demonstrates, you know, unhooking the cooler lines and starting the truck and, you know, letting it just pump the fluid out and then filling it up and then, you know, keep repeating that process if you want to do more of a complete, you know, fluid exchange, I guess it would be. In my opinion, if you're doing normal maintenance and you're doing spill and fills every 30 or 50K, then, you know, this is fine. Now, step two, I just take the gasket. It comes with the new filter kit. Uh, this one had a quart gasket on. Of course, I've already, you know, just take the gasket off, clean the pan, make sure the uh, surface is clean and dry. I fit my gasket so I know which side goes down. But it's always my habit to spray it with some Permatex high tack. Of course, you can't see it because they put a sticker over it. Uh, this is uh, going to make the gasket adhere to the pan, so that way there you're not fighting that as you're trying to put the pan on. This is where people really freak out in the video. One training video I did, I used spray tack like I've done on, you know, 500 other transmission pans, and people are losing their mind. Apparently, this will completely destroy your transmission and stick all your clutches together, and these people will never come to my shop, they tell me, and they unsubscribe because I'm such a hack. So... Keep that in mind. While we're waiting for that to tack up, there is a seal up in here that the transmission filter neck slides up into. We gotta get that seal out. Sometimes they can be kind of a pisser because of where they're at. So let me get a little hammer. A lot of times you get up there and just kind of hook on them and get them out. Sometimes if you can get on the edge of them, just kind of crush them in a little. They'll come out a bit easier. Kind of hard to demonstrate, I'll show you. I know most folks never take these out or replace them, which, you know, which is fine. As long as your filter, you know, as long as it has some elasticity to it still, I don't see an issue with it. So if you can get the edge of it to kind of cave in on you, then usually it gives you something to get a hold of, and then you can pop them right out like that. So there's a the little seal that goes in there. Like I say, you just take and keep working around the edge and kind of crush it in. And then to put the new one in, you only got one chance because they only come with one. I like to get a socket that fits it, you know, just right. So that way there you can line it up. Just tap it up in. It does have a little flange on it, so it'll stop at the appropriate time. Now these usually go in relatively easy. Just make sure you get it started straight. I just kind of balance it on the edge of the socket. Take the steps you off here. Like I say, you have to get them started nice and straight. So good. All right. That sounds good and solid. Let me show you that because I know it's hard to see from your position. But that's where the little seal lives. It's right up in there. And then you just take a little training fluid and just put on the lip of it, and that's going to retain our filter up in the hole. Take and stick our new filter in. 
shotgun. Wait a little bit. Get that sitting up in there. Now it sits in a very specific spot on the bell body here where it's kind of cut out and you'll see you know, it sits in nice. Now if you doubt your ability to, to change that seal without damaging it, it's probably best that you just leave it as long as you can feel it seal on your filter. Um, you know, naturally if it starts sucking air there, you're gonna have some issues. Change it if you can uh, would be, you know, my advice. But tack or spray tack is good and tacky. And get your gaskets lined back up on your pan here. Now this is uh, some of my favorite gasket adhesive. To give it time to get tacked up, it does work really well. Saves you a lot of aggravation. Now you can spray both sides of it if you like. A lot of times on you know stuff like this, I may only spray one side of it. That way, it doesn't stick to the transmission. You know, when you go back through at another you know 30 or 50k, whatever your service intervals are, drop the pan. You know, now you don't have to go trying to scrape the old gasket off the transmission. A lot easier to you know clean it off the pan when the pan's out here in the open so that'll keep it on there a little less fighting now we'll just make sure your pan or the bottom of your transmission here where the pan goes is nice and clean this one was had to scrape just a little bit off it just gonna wipe some of the training fluid off the ceiling surface if you leave them dripping long enough, it really helps. Okay. We'll take our pan. Now you got to get it back up around uh, the shift cable bracket here. So you kind of got to tip it up in there first. And then it always helps. When you put the transmission pan on in the right direction, it always fits better. Seeing if anybody's paying attention. And then get a couple bolts started here. Once you get all your bolts started, don't don't go kill them. You know, usually what I'll do is uh, just get them all started, and then just start using uh, you know kind of a spread, spread pattern here, start snugging them up. Whoa! Drop the sockets. Start snugging them up equally to draw the pan down. And some kind of random. Pattern. Yeah, just get some even tension going here. And then we'll just start going around the pan. Now a lot of people have a tendency to really over tighten these. my habits usually do is I'll just go through and just kind of snug them up because you don't want to squish your gasket out. We'll let it go through a heat cycle and then just double check them and then usually they're good. So one thing I would say if your GM has a reusable pan gasket on it, the thick plastic ones with a impregnated rubber o-ring on it, uh, definitely by all means reuse those. Now this one came in and like I said I had a cork gasket on it so we had to use the gasket that came with the kit but a lot of GM's I don't know if these ones in particular have the reusable gasket but I definitely prefer those a lot less likely to leak you know very rarely do the pan bolts come loose and if you feel that you're gonna over, tar over torque these definitely by all means get the torque spec and do it that way I like to use a little speed wrench because it really prevents you from over tightening them. But 
these ones feel pretty good now. And then just look up around the edge of your pan. You know, I mean, if you over tightened it and you split the gasket, it's going to be hanging right out the side of it. So now I'm going to start out with about four quarts of trans food. You're going to have to look to see what, uh, what the spec is on your vehicle. This guy's been using Mercon 6. So that's what we're filling it back up with. This car would originally have came with, uh, you know, Dextron 3 in it. Of course, this is GM's new fluid. I don't remember when they started using it, 07 or whatever. Supposedly it is backwards compatible with uh, the Dextron 3 that it would have came with. But I did ask him what he had replaced the fluid with last time. Apparently this was it. So I just wanted to be sure. Now we're gonna take and start it up. Now this one has to be checked with the transmission hot, vehicle level ground, idling in park. Now we've got a, a cold mark high-low and a hot mark high-low on our stick. So we're gonna be trying to, you know, go to the top side of our cold mark currently. We'll start it up, run through gears, and sometimes you have to let them sit for a while to get all that fluid off the uh, dips or off the fill tube to get an accurate reading. So if your stick is all completely covered with it, you know, give it some time and then recheck it. stick so we'll grab another quart here dump in and just kind of continue on through that process until we get a good reading as you can see here we got our pretty clear line at the top of the cold mark just below the hot mark getting that pretty consistently. Before we're done, we'll just double check for leaks. Make sure the edge of the pan is good and dry. Don't see anything dribbling out of it. Like I said, I'll take the vehicle for a drive, you know, get the, get the transmission up to operating temperature. Uh, usually what I like to do is let them cool back down and just double check the bolts. We should be good to go. So we'll leave it at that for right now. I'm gonna take the vehicle for a drive, make sure it shifts nice. I don't uh, foresee any problems because, like I say, this just came in as a normal maintenance routine scheduled by the customer, transmission, fluid, and filter. Uh, pretty basic. Uh, in my personal opinion, I feel that if you do this as a scheduled maintenance, there's no need to get real carried away with the whole you know, concern of getting every ounce of fluid out of the transmission. Now, a lot of times when you go to uh, transmission shops or shops that have flush machines or I guess exchange fluid, full fluid exchange machines would be the you know the proper term for that. You know, they'll unhook your cooler line, replenish the transmission with fluid, and you know pump the old fluid out at the same time. What I see that most people do that, or you know that take their vehicle in for that service, is in an attempt to fix a problem. You know, they already have a mechanical issue. You know, transmission slipping. You know, uh, you know slamming into gear, whatever the case may be. It always seems to me that's the kind of the last ditch effort because the transmission's been neglected its whole life. You know, now we need it flushed all of a sudden and you know hope for a cure, but usually that doesn't happen. <laughs> so anyhow, leave your questions, comments, of course, all the criticisms we'll get from this video in the comment box below. Make sure you smash that thumbs down button if you don't like the video. Let us know why and uh, find us on our socials around, subscribe to the channel click the notification bell, and just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.